Now that we have created all the functionality for communicating with our database, then we can create the class that is going to contain all our high scores. And this high score class is going to be in a list and that list needs to be sorted at some point so that our high scores will be shown in the correct order. But before we're going to sort them and show them to the player, we'll have to create the class. So you can go to your asset folder here and inside your scripts and then you can right click add and then create a new class. And this class is going to be called high score. And then add. Uh, if you added the script by doing it inside your IDE like this, um, then you will probably have to delete this namespace here. So just cut the class out and delete the namespace and replace it with the class. Because else you won't be able to access the functionality in the different classes from within the high score. If you already, uh, if you created it from out here in Unity by going to scripts and right clicking and then selecting create new script like this, create script and then C sharp script, then you will have to go to the script here and remove this uh, where it inheres from mono, mono behavior here. So just delete that so it, o it only states class high score. So first of all, this, uh, this class will need a score. So we are going to make a pro public integer and we're going to call it score. And this is a automatic property. So it's just gonna write public integer score get set so that we can access it from outside. And we're going to do the same with the name, property, uh, string, and then write name. And if you have uh, C, -sharp, uh, C sharp, not C sharp, if you have Visual Studio, you can write P R O P and then tap twice. Then it's going to create the structure for you. And we can make it date time, date, and property, and then integer ID. Okay, so now we have all the uh, properties, all the fields that, that this um, high score class is going to have. Um, we need to save score and name a date and an ID. Then we're going to set these by writing public high score. This is a constructor and the constructor is called whenever we create a new high score. And when we create a new high score, we will have to give it a ID. We'll have to give it a score, we'll have to give it a name, and we'll have to give it a date time so that we know when it's, it's scored. Now we have created a constructor, but we're not using these values for anything. We need to store them up here in these uh, properties we just created. So we're going to say this dot score equals score to set this score here equal to this score up here. We're going to say this dot name equals name to set this name equal to this name up here. And then we're going to say this dot um, ID equals ID and this dot date equals date. There we go. So now all these values we're giving in here are going to be a they are going to be equal to these up here or the other way around of course. All these values up here are going to be equal to the values that we give in down here. So that's what we need to do for now inside the high score. If we go back to the high score manager we will have to add some functionality here because we'll need to store those high scores in a list. So up here in the fields, we are going to write private list. And if you can't find the list, um, the, the list class here, you'll have to add the list class by going up here to your namespaces, writing using system dot uh, collections dot generic. Go. Then you should be able to find the list class here. So we define the list by writing private because we don't need to access it from outside. We're going to write the type we need list. And in here we're going to write the type of um, objects this list is going to contain. And it's going to contain a high score. And we're just gonna write high score. High scores equals new list high score. There we go. So now we have created an instance of our high score list. So now we can add the high scores to this list every time we create a new high score, every time we load some high scores in from our database. 
So every time we load our scores, we will have to clear the high score list uh, so that we don't load more scores in at the same time. So let's say we only show the high score list. And if we try to show it again, well, then we need to clear the list so that we don't show the same scores more times. So we have to go to our get scores function here. And the first thing we have to do is to say scores.clear high scores dot clear. There we go. So that clears out the list. So if we already had 10 scores, for example, in it, then we're going to clear it. So we start on a new and then we need to add them. And the best place to add them to the high school is it's simply to go to this line down here. So instead of debug.log, write it out. We are going to add the high scores to the list. And we are going to say high scores dot add. And the first thing we want to do is to add a new high score item. It's a new high score. So first of all, it wants the ID. And if we look in here, we can see the ID is placed on position zero. Zero, one, two, three. So position zero it is. So we're going to say reader that get integer 32. And we are going to say we want something on position zero. <clears throat> so next thing we need is the name. The name is on position one. So we are going to say reader dot get string one. Next thing is the ah okay I missed them. So the next one was the score and then its name. So as you can see here, the score has zero one two. It's on position two. So we actually have to go in here and say get integer position two. And then if I make a comma again, you'll see that this ID score and name. So I have to write reader dot get string on position one. And then the last one is the date time, and that's reader dot get uh, date time on position three. There we go. We could have switched it around inside the high score here, so it would have zero, one, two, three, but it doesn't really matter what uh, order you make it in here, as long as you just remember to give in the right values down here. And then I need to close this. Okay, so now we're adding all our high scores to the high score list. And that's basically what we need to do with the high score class right now. Um, in the next part, we are going to have a look at how we can show the scores to the player in the game by using some UI elements.